OK, let's start, of course, with Rafa Benitez, because this is the big breaking news, isn't it, this morning. His future as Everton boss is in serious doubt after the club has called this board meeting to discuss his position following that 2-1 defeat to Norwich. So let's cross now to the club's training ground and speak live to Ben Ransom, who's there for us. So good morning, Ben. Can you tell us what's the very latest from where you are? Yeah, well, we're waiting for official movement after what we heard last night. That was that there were discussions around Rafa Benitez's future. The board talking to owner Farhad Mashiri about Benitez, all set against the backdrop of supporter protest against the backdrop of poor results and really humbling and disappointing performances, not least that loss against Norwich yesterday. Some of the travelling fans found it too much to stomach. We saw that banner unfurled calling for Rafa Benitez to be sacked. And you have to say he's hanged by a thread today. Worth pointing out as well and putting this in some sort of context, given his obvious history with Merseyside rivals Liverpool. He wasn't the most popular appointment at the time. There were serious reservations amongst some members of the Everton board about the appointment, but the owner Farhad Mashiri uh, wanted Rafa Benitez. He felt he was the man to take this uh, club forward and ultimately that's where the decision will be made. Now, Mashiri has been in England this week. He, in fact, he was here at the training ground on Thursday where he spoke to the manager, Rafa Benitez, where he spoke to the board as well. So he He's aware of the situation. He's been taking a very close look at it. But ultimately, that loss against Norwich, it really does damage any chances, you'd have to say, of Rafa Nises that's keeping this job uh, for the future and long term. Especially also uh, when you consider the number of Everton managers that have come in and not been able to achieve the results that the fans have wanted. Since Roberto Martinez left in 2016. Rafa Benitez is the fifth permanent manager here at the club. And you have to say this morning he's very much on the brink. Yeah, he certainly is. Thank you very much, Ben. Look, Andy, if we look at the stats, nine defeats in 12 games. Yeah. Can he have any problems if Rafa Benitez does indeed lose his job? Um, I, I don't think so. We have to be very honest with uh, If he does lose his job, results say why he's lost his job. Mm -hmm. uh, watching Everton this season, they've been very indifferent in form. Uh, winning games when you not expect them to win games and losing games when you expect them to win. So, like I said, the, the form is, has not been the best. Yeah, I mean, they <clears throat> potentially would have expected to win against Norwich. Norwich themselves struggling as well. I, I would imagine so. Uh, not being disrespectful no. to Norwich. Um, going to Carroll Road, you're expected to win Everton. Uh, and and they've, not, they've not done it, but it's not just the game against Norwich. I think it's been a game throughout the season. They've just not been good enough. Do you feel, Darren, mm. you know, because of his Liverpool connection as well, I remember breaking the news here on mm. Sky Sports News saying that Rafa Benitez had taken over. There was a big uproar at the time from Everton fans saying, you, you can't do this to us. Mm. Do you feel that, you know, as soon as results, you know, most fans, if somebody starts winning, they kind of back them. But did you always fear this, if once results started to dip, that this could be the, the problem they faced? Yeah, face? absolutely. He was always a high-risk appointment for Farhad Mashiri. He was the one who really pushed it when the fans were very clear mm -hmm. about the fact that they didn't want him at the club. They won for four of the first five games, and it looks to be a good signing. But then after that, it started to unravel big time. They went out of the League Cup. They went out of the FA Cup. Uh, the League Cup was to Queen's Park Rangers, bear in mind. You know, this was a championship club that they went out of that uh, competition to. And then uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, sorry, last week, they uh, had to go to extra time to beat Hull in the third round of the FA Cup. You look at the formations he was playing, the style of football he was playing, it wasn't good. And, you know, if you look at the big picture, he's only won three games out of the last 17 in all competitions, as you say. It's a high-risk strategy. If it goes well, great. Mm. If it goes badly, you can see why the Everton fans are so happy. I just point you to the back page. I don't know if some of the viewers <coughs> can see it. Mail on Sunday, Rafa out, and just look at the sub deck as well. Uh, Everton act after embarrassing defeat uh, to Norwich, and the context of that defeat Norwich had been so easy to beat, they'd lost mm. their last six, the, well, the, they'd scored the least goals in the Premier League, in fact, in all four divisions mm. uh, of English football, the top four top divisions. And the style of football was so bad, there was an emergency board meeting, as we know, last night. We're expecting the news to come out today. Mm. I'm going to point you don't have it on the graphic, but I want to point you to a piece inside the mail on Sunday by a season ticket holder, uh, a guy called Paul Farragut, who dist he describes Rafa as a one-man wrecking ball. 
destroying their club. And he says that Rafa's position is untenable, believes that a lot of Everton fans gave him the benefit of the doubt, as you were saying. Yeah. And, and actually, it's not a piece that slags Rafa off for the sake of it. Because he said, look, when he arrived, he brought in Demery Gray and Ross Townsend, two of the best signings, still the, mm -hmm. the two best signings, uh, for £1.8 million between them. He, he talks about the fact that injuries were not Rafa's fault as well. So it's a very balanced piece. Yeah. But he says, when you look at the performances, when you look at the results, when you look at the fact that they were abject against Norwich and had the game been a little bit longer, Norwich probably would have scored another goal you have to assume that Rafa's position is untenable. And the last point I'd make is this. For me personally, I, I think Rafa treated Everton like just another job. Mm. I don't think he actually thought enough about the feelings of the Everton fans. He'd been a across the city with the Liverpool. He'd won the Champions League with them. Mm. He'd had a real affinity with that club, a real bond. And he just saw Everton as a group of players, another club, tactics, formations. Didn't really buy into the emotion around the club. And I don't think in football you can do that anymore. And that's why I think his position is untenable. I, I know Jamie Redknapp was speaking about Rafa Benitez last night and, and said, said similar things, you know, about his approach and how he, he approaches the job. Do you feel that, as Darren was saying, he should have gone in and, and what he first needed to do was potentially win the fans over? And that, that would have been hard, though, surely? Yeah, I, I think, of course, you've got to do that. After, especially after managing Liverpool, you, you've got to try and win the fans over. Uh, but from the outside looking in, and, you know, just seeing the reports about Rafa, he's, he always seems to go to a football club and pick fights and falls out with people. And people that he doesn't want at the football club, he always seems to win, gets them out. And then he, like, he wants to run, run the football club the way he wants to run it. I think same thing at Everton. You know, however you look at Everton, Everton is a very, very big club. You know, but he's not got the results needed. And he's upset people there. He's got people out again. You know, now he's bringing in, in transfers. And I'm looking, he got rid of, for me personally, one of his best players in Luca Dini. You know, brought in a fullback. He's brought in um, a right back as well, and it looks like he's going to be moved on. So you turn around and say, he's yeah, that was very clear that it yeah. was been a falling out between those two. And exactly. Dean, I mean, his parting shot was, you know, I want to go and work for somebody that. You ask the question, where, where's the logic in all this? Mm -hmm. If you're going to do that, you're going to back him one week, and then the week after, you're going to sack him. I, I look at it, it's, it's very, very strange. Roy Keane obviously has questioned the players as well. I mean, he comes in as a, as a former player himself, and he, he says that he questions the characters. Have they got a big part to play in this, though, here? Players have a massive part, as simple as that. I think once your manager gives you, sets your plan out for the week on the training pitch, once you cross that white line, as players, you've got to work it out yourself. Mm. Um, a manager has 15 minutes at half time, and that's that. Players have to take responsibilities because you're there to do your job. You know, we can always, managers will always get sacked, of course, you know, if the players don't perform. But as players, you've got to take responsibilities as well for the results that you get. This is becoming a, a common theme, as Ben Ransom told us there, you know, under Farhad Mashiri. If we remember, as soon as they, they got humbled by Liverpool, um, Farhad Moshiri came out and, and actually got rid of Marcel Brands in the end and not Rafa Benitez and very much backed Rafa Benitez. Um, is this the sign of, of what's going on with this club? It's actually not necessarily just what's happening on the pitch. It's actually what's happening off it as well. Yeah, I think so. I mean, listen, to point to Andy's point, you know, Marcel Brands and, and Rafa, the falling out between them, symptomatic of the fact that he does go to clubs and get involved in politics, fights behind the scenes, power struggles. Uh, and then, you, you know, if you do succeed in those power struggles, when you bring your players in, for example, they've got to do well. Yeah. Mikhailenko yesterday, I mean, he almost gave away a goal mm -hmm. on his debut. Uh, Nathan Patterson didn't get on yesterday. Um, but I just think fans are sick of... Uh, being told to be patient, being told that, um, well, if you look at Mashiri, for example, Mashiri keeps bringing in Hollywood managers, believing that fans want to see glitz and glamour. What they want is somebody to come in with a plan. But somebody it's to fair come to say that, I, but, you know, Carlo Ancelotti was a serial winner. Rafa Benitez, to be fair, is a serial winner, so you can see kind of what he's trying to do. So why isn't it working every time he does bring in these big, big name managers? Well, I think the, the, what they need to do is bring in a director of football. Because if you bring in a, a director of football, then you have a plan. You have somebody who can, not just for the short term, but for the longer term as well. There's got to be some, there's got to be some joined up thinking at the club. Yeah. And the fact that Rafa is able to come in, pick fights and Marcel Brands leave suggests to me that there isn't joined up thinking at the club. Mm. It suggests to me that if somebody goes complaining to Mashiri, one or the other wins rather yeah. than everyone getting around the table and working out a way forward that puts the club first. And from my point of view, I think 
I look at Rafa and I can see why Everton fans are angry. I can see why, why the whole thing from the outside looking in is so disjointed and that it may even get worse for Everton fans before it gets better. Yeah, it seems very much like that. You know, we, we've talked about the fact that they have spent, they have invested a whole heap of money on, on big players. You know, you look back, Alan, Hammers, Decore, Ben Coffrey, these are players that are 20-plus million pounds. Yeah. You know, it just hasn't worked out for whatever reason. And Ancelotti looked like he was there for the duration, and then suddenly he goes really rather unexpectedly I've as well. I've got to say, they were unlucky with Ancelotti because he came there, things didn't go well, but yet obviously then he was spirited away by Real Madrid. There's nothing you can do about that. But some of the players that were brought in before Ancelotti, he was saddled with, and yeah. that's the problem. They're a big club, a lot of money, but the recruitment before Ancelotti came in had not been good. The players he brought in were better. Yeah. Uh, the players that Benitez brought in were better. There was a lot of dead wood at Everton Football Club. As you said, the players, some of the players that have come in, taken the money and underachieved have to look at themselves. Yeah, but of course, as players, that's what you're supposed to do. You know, because if you've got any prize, you want to win football matches. And if you look at the position Everton find themselves in, now you tell us it's so. With all those players they have, how are they still in this position? They, they shouldn't be. Yeah. Because they're, they're a lot better than where they are now. Yeah, so I guess what the question is next, who comes in if, indeed, Rafa does uh, is sacked today or, indeed, this week. Wayne Rooney is, is a name that everyone's talking about, mm. considering the job that he's doing at Derby. Would he be a good fit, do you feel? I, I think phew, he's his boy or club as well. Um, anything's possible in football nowadays. And if, if Wayne did go there, if you look at what he's doing at Derby at the moment, he, he's, he's working miracles, you know. He's, I'm not going to call it a shoestring budget because it's not even that. <laughs> no, you know, he's, it's he's just a deficit budget. Yeah, you know, he's, he's working with bodies and the results he's getting, whatever he's doing with his backroom staff, whatever he's doing with the players, they're all buying into it. So if he did have the opportunity, you know, no doubt he'd be able to do it there as well. And is that what they need <clears> to do? It's almost, you bring Wayne Rooney in, you're going to appease the fans, surely, straight away, aren't you? Well, on the face of it, but then again, I think they've got to be very careful with this signing. They've gone through a lot of managers. Obviously, Rooney would play to the gallery, but that's what Mashir has been doing all this time. Mm. Having said that, Rooney is managed to get commitment from his players in a situation that's dire for their club, but he's managing to inspire the players to go out and play. And I think in a lot of cases at Everton, it's about commitment to the shirt. Lots of players are getting weighed in. Lots of players are getting big money at Everton, but the club are almost second in the wages first. Uh, yeah, well, he's, got, he's got to be, you know, I hear what you're saying, but he's got to be pride. You, you've got to have pride. Uh, no, I agree. I agree. I think we're agreed on that. Yeah. I, I think it has to be. And this is what I'm talking about with Rooney. That Rooney is managing to get that kind of pride yeah. in the shirt, commitment to the club, um, pride in their work from the Derby players in a dire situation. Mm. But you can't see, you, you don't seem to be seeing something similar from the Everton players. Mm, definitely. Do you see this being turned around at all? Do you see a bit of joined up thinking going on behind the scenes? Do you think that Fahad Mashiri can bash this out and actually Rafa has any future at the club right now? Do you want to say that me one? personally? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I said, I think we're all on the outside looking. And I'm, mm. I'm looking at you, listen to the Everton fans, they're not going to accept him. And the position they find themselves in now, I can't see it happening. I really can't. I think it's. So another manager that's not worked out for Everton. We talk about the players that they've brought in, the money they've spent on players. Bring, the managers that they've got rid of, got rid of, sorry, the money they've spent getting rid of those managers. It's, it's all adding up. Yeah, OK.